In Tottenham's statement, their managing director of football, Fabio Paratici, said, quote, I know how much Nuno and his coaching staff wanted to succeed, and I regret that we have had to take this decision. Nuno is a true gentleman, and he will always be welcome here. We should like to thank him and his coaching staff and wish them well for the future. The club added that a further coaching update will follow in due course. Time to welcome in our Premier League insider, David Ornstein. David, on this show yesterday, you mentioned that you thought Tottenham would give Nuno at least a little bit more time. What changed in the last 24 hours? Yeah, Paul, good evening, everyone. Well, that was our understanding at that point in time because it was accurate. And Tottenham came out of that defeat by Manchester United bruised, but they wanted to let the dust settle and think about how they could get through to the upcoming international break with Nuno still in charge, perhaps an upturn in the European game that comes on Thursday. They were telling us from sources high up the club that it was business as usual and they were planning ahead with Nuno for that match. But the realisation dawned on them as the day went on that, frankly, Nuno was the wrong appointment in the first place. And despite his encouraging start, it has unravelled quite spectacularly. Crucially, as I understand it, he had lost the players. He had lost the dressing room. It's a horrible phrase, but it is true. They no longer had... Uh, faith in him. He didn't have their backing anymore. And so as the day went on and those discussions that you point out um, developed late on Sunday night in the UK, the atmosphere among the Tottenham board of directors, the mood changed. They felt if we're going to make this decision, we need to make it now. One of the key factors that we'll come on to discuss is that Antonio Conte was showing a willingness to take that job. And when he's showing a willingness to take a job at a club like yours in the situation you're in, then you can't hang about. And so that decision was actually made very late on Sunday night to the extent that Nuno came in for training at the club's uh, headquarters um, thinking he was going to lead the session but he was told of his news he was relieved of his duties and we think that he was placed on gardening leave which will save Daniel Levy paying him out a lump sum um, and with that he was gone. Now as we've revealed on NBC previously this was a contract that was in Tottenham's favour throughout. Daniel Levy struck a good deal there whatever you think of his decision decision to appoint Nuno Espirito Santo in the first place after what really seemed to be a shambolic recruitment process to replace Jose Mourinho. It was around £3 million a year, which is a hell of a lot lower than what Mourinho was earning and what Conte will be earning at the club if and when he is appointed. And my view or my understanding was that there was a clause in that contract saying that if Tottenham didn't finish in the top six, they could sack him for, for no compensation in the summer. Now, some at the club disputed that, but I believe that to be the case. Um, and so Daniel Levy would have liked to have got through to the summer because it would have been more economically viable for him. But this situation was unsustainable. He needed to act now. And it is not the most costly decision he's going to have to make. He's back to square one and he's going to be appointing somebody that he heavily considered um, in the summer. It didn't materialise on that occasion, but it is going to materialise now. Yes, uh, more on that. If Antonio Conte has shown a willingness to take this job, how close is that deal to fruition? My understanding tonight, Paul, is that Antonio Conte is very close to being appointed as the new manager of Tottenham Hotspur. An agreement, I'm told, by sources at the top of the club is nearly there and we should expect an announcement tomorrow morning, UK time. There are even reports here that he will lead Tottenham in their training session. The contract, as it's being said here, is going to be 18 months, possibly with an option of a further 12 months if Tottenham qualify for the Champions League. He's reportedly going to be earning anything between £15 million to £20 million per year. This is a bumper deal for one of the biggest coaches in world football, one of the most successful, a proven winner. It's somebody that many people and supporters especially would have liked to see come into Tottenham last summer. It didn't materialise. Uh, he has been a free agent since and we saw recently he was heavily linked with replacing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer at Manchester United. They've kept faith with him, but Tottenham have not kept faith with Nuno Espirito Santo. So we have Antonio Conte in London tonight to hopefully, in Tottenham's view, uh, put pen to paper on that deal. The contract is waiting to be signed. And I think for all intents and purposes, despite so many false dawns 
over numerous managers last summer uh, and, and that chaotic recruitment process. This one is for real and Tottenham are set to appoint uh, Antonio Conte as their new boss. Why do you think Conte didn't want to go to Tottenham in the summer, but he does want to now? Well, Paul, I don't think it was that he didn't want to go. I think there were a few reservations on both sides. And, and let's get into some of that now. First of all, he had just come out of Inter Milan, and I think he would have been looking for a similar calibre of job, maybe the likes of Real Madrid or Paris Saint-Germain. Real Madrid decided to take Carlo Ancelotti. Paris Saint-Germain took um, Maurizio Pochettino, of course, formerly of Tottenham. And, and he did indeed have conversations with Tottenham about returning to them because it looked like he may come out of that job. And so with also uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in position and given a new contract at Manchester United, the option seemed to be running out for, um, for Antonio Conte. Uh, he would have been expecting to take one of those top jobs. When it didn't materialise, he didn't want to take a break from football. He wasn't planning a sabbatical. And that's why he engaged in conversations with Tottenham. There were, as I understand it, some uh, reservations on, on behalf of some of his family to come back to England. It wasn't the easiest thing for them to do at that point in time. There were some reservations on the part of Tottenham Hotspur in terms of his uh, well-renowned re backroom staff of, uh, uh, you know, talk of six to eight different people, a bit of an army of, um, of people that support him and the cost that it would have entailed, um, not just in terms of recruiting him, his salary, but also in terms of the money he would like to spend in the transfer market and coming out or still in a pandemic, that wasn't something that appealed to Daniel Levy. Uh, on the flip side, you have Antonio Conte uh, and his view of the project at Tottenham. He had reservations for sure. We were in a transfer window. There was huge speculation over whether Harry Kane, Tottenham's leader, their talisman, would be sold, their top scorer. And Antonio Conte didn't want to come into that job and find that his best player was taken away from him, even though Tottenham was saying that they were going to be keeping him at the club. You never know in a transfer market. And that was not something that appealed to Antonio Conte. There were also reservations on Tottenham's part about the style of football that Antonio Conte would be playing if he was coming into the club. Uh, and, and also his, his personality. He's a very dominant, powerful character. Would he butt heads with Daniel Levy, the Tottenham chairman, in a more spectacular way than uh, Jose Mourinho had himself. He is known to be quite a combustible figure. We've seen that at Chelsea and Inter Milan and, and also the Italian national team. But crucially, he's a winner. And we're going to come on to talk about now, aren't we, why they've got him now and how they go forward. Because a key player in this is Fabio Paratici, the Tottenham uh, uh, managing director of football. And we are going to get to that. David Ornstein, our Premier League insider, thank you very much. Welcome inside the studio. Paul Burmeister alongside Danny Higginbotham and Robbie Musto. Uh, Robbie, as you have thought about Tottenham's sacking of Nuno here throughout the morning <clears throat> and the afternoon, have you found yourself agreeing with that decision more or questioning it more? It's tough to agree with it. Well, the man's been in charge for four months. In August, he wins manager of the month. He has a bad September. They win two, lose two in October, and boom, he's gone. But... Given that Antonio Conte is available, given that Fabio Paratici, the director uh, David was just talking about, used to work with him at Juventus, I would surmise that there's conversations for him saying, you know what, maybe I would fancy that job. And then the result of the weekend, of course, was really bad for this guy, <clears throat> the fan reaction. So I kind of get it. If they do sign Antonio Conte, I think it's exciting for the fans. It, it... <clears throat> It is exciting for the fans. And just going back, back to Nuno, the problem that he had from the very first day he stepped foot into that football club was that he knew, and more importantly, the players knew, he wasn't the first choice. So straight away, it's very difficult to then gain that respect. And that's, that's the problem. I think when we look at Conte, we know he's a serial winner. The things that he's done, I have my concerns. Not with him as a manager, but him going to a club like Tottenham, where you're having to deal with an owner like Daniel Levy. And if you go back to his two years at Chelsea, he spent slightly less than what Tottenham have spent in the last five years. And that's concerning for me. It really is concerning for me. And this could go one way or the other, but I have my reservations over it. Just a couple of things. I'll come back straight away there, Paul. Um, I think now Paratici is the managing director of football. It's time for him and the coach, if it is Antonio Conte, to deal with everything. Daniel Levy, for me, Danny, should not now be involved. I know he'll overlook, and I know maybe he's going to uh, 
butt in at some point, but Paratici now should be the, the head of this football, should be trusted as such. Back to the spending. Mm. Yep, uh, he spent, certainly spent money at uh, Inter and at, uh, at Chelsea. But before that, back in 2011, Paratici hired Antonio Conte to go into Juventus, who did... He did an amazing job of, of finding people for, for very little money. Found Paul Bogba at Man United for hardly anything. Free transfers in, in Perlo. Fernando Llorente, a player that wasn't a big profile player, brought them together and won a title out of nowhere. First time, I think, at least five years. So he has done it before with limited funds. Mm. And I just think it's an exciting guy to bring into your club. The club needs a shake-up yeah. for me. It needs it, a shake-up. And he's going to do that. It, it does. I, I agree 100%. My own... When you look at Juventus, the job he did there was incredible. But who he had to challenge against, teams and finances that he had to challenge against, is very different. We're seeing Newcastle now that have just been, obviously, you know, taken over. The money they're going to spend. We know Manchester City spend money. We know Manchester United spend money. We know Liverpool spend money. Tottenham have got to fall in line and spend more to mm. get the squad up to where those teams mm. I've just mentioned are. I don't see Daniel Levy doing it. And as much as we'd love to say, well, Daniel Levy just needs to step to the side now. He's never going to do that. We've seen that when they buy players and we've seen it more importantly when they sell players or they don't sell players. You mentioned that you think the club does need a shake-up. Mm. I think of the word fix. If they do need to fix some oh, things... He's a fixer. What's the top of the list? Defensively. And that's what he does. That's what he does best. I, it, I'll tell a quick story. Um, back in 2011, I actually was working for another network uh, covering a Juventus game in the United States in North Carolina. He'd just taken over at Juventus. I went the day before the game and watched Antonio Conte coach his new Juve team in a training session. Well, let me tell you, I, I sat there for 40 minutes and it was shadow play, which, for those who don't know, it's when your 11 is out on a full-size full size pitch and the goalkeeper rolls the ball out. OK, you're going to go to him. He's going to go to you. We're going to do that. He's going to link it back inside. We're going to go there, there and there, finish with a shot across. OK, let's do it again. So, so you, you, he's trying to ingrain patterns of play. I watched the game the following day, and I, I think I commentated on the game. I'm like, oh, I, I saw these patterns from yesterday. So it, I, it's boring. He's going to run the legs off the players, mm. but his methods have worked before. And, and just before we jump back in, Danny, I think, mm. I think what his targets are is, is tough. To, to go and expect Spurs to win the, the, the Premier League in the next couple of years, 18 months contract, almost impossible. But I wonder, Danny, if he can if he can improve the team enough and the club enough for the, for the ownership to say, you know what, here's a few more years and some more money to spend. I think what's going to be really interesting, you talk about, Conte, how he is, the tactical side of things. We saw what he did at Chelsea, what he did at Inter Milan in terms of playing with the back three. You've got Nuno, who came from Wolves, where he was renowned for playing the back three, controlling the games out of possession, came to Tottenham, didn't play a back three once in the Premier League. And that's what he's known for. But we know that Conte is going to come in, he has his style, and he's probably going to go straight to a back Definitely. three. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting to see, to see how that evolves. I think the powers that be at Spurs will be looking and saying, right, Conte, come to the club, get us in that top four. Because there is potentially that fourth place. Because Manchester United, obviously, they're having a little bit of a wobble at the moment. West Ham are doing exceptionally well. I've had a great start to the season, but he will be looking at it and thinking, right, OK, get this team into the top four and then move forward from there. Just, just one more point, you know, in terms of spending money. He has got... There are some good players at the club. If he can get, and I'm saying it one more time, it's the last chance for Deli Alley. Mm. Deli Alley can run. I mean, he's got a tremendous engine. He could be a, a Conte type of player. He's got to get Kane on side. Xiongmin's son, of course, is a, is a good attacking player. Lucas Moore has got pace on a counter-attack, which he will like. So it may be, and it's a big maybe, there isn't that many big expensive parts they have to go and get. I just think it's exciting, him coming in, shaking the club up. I mean, they've had a couple of disappointing seasons. How, how awful can it get? What, how yeah. bad a job can he do? I, I think one, one of the things is, when he was previously manager at Chelsea, I think Chelsea were such... Well, one of the clubs in the Premier League that if players were looking to move to the Premier League, top players, Chelsea would have been in the top two or three at the time. I think likewise when he was at Inter Milan. I don't think that's the case at Tottenham. I think teams, players will look at Liverpool, Manchester City, um, potentially, um, obviously Chelsea, potentially Manchester United. So all of a sudden he's going to a club where it's not come to the Premier League and come and play for us because we are, to a certain extent, the be-all and the end-all. Mm. If the other teams that I've just mentioned want these players, they're going to get them before Tottenham do. And that's whether Conte's there or not. And I go back to it. My major concern is that 
there are disagreements at a very early stage. When Conte wants to go and bring his players in and Daniel Levy is saying, no, because this player isn't worth it or no, because we're not spending that amount of money. I, I'm glad you brought up the possibility of the thought of them finishing fourth because the, the top three seem to be pretty well set. Yeah. Mm. And it's hard to, to attach the term realistic to expectations with any fan base. But is it a realistic expectation to think that's something that's out there if we get a little better? Yeah, it is. Difficult. Really, really difficult. But you, you want an expectation the fans will want and expect. We've got, what is it, 28 games left of the mm -hmm. season. You know, he's talking about maybe, maybe training tomorrow's session, maybe. There's a little bit of time there to get this team up to speed, but very difficult. Yep, I, I agree 100%. It, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I don't see it. There's not going to be a middle ground here. It's it's either going to be spectacular. Uh, and by the way, oh, I, hope he, I hope he signs. By the way, because if he doesn't decide to sign, who the heck next is going to be? Exactly. Uh, then it is a real mess. Right? Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.